Everybody who's made it this far, congratulations. We're powering through solutions to the Physics GRE GR0877. We're on number 31. A layer of oil with density 800 kilograms per cubic meter floats on top of a volume of water with density 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. A block floats at the oil-water interface with one quarter of its volume in oil and three quarters of its volume in water, as shown in the figure above. What is the density of the block? We're going to apply Archimedes' principle and say rho b, rho block, uh, times g times the volume equals the rho water, g three quarters volume plus rho oil, g times one quarter volume. So the density of the block equals three quarters times the density of water plus one quarter times the density of oil. So the the density of the block equals 750 kilograms per cubic meter plus 200 kilograms per cubic meter equals 950 kilograms per, per cubic meter. And that is going to equal answer C. 32. An incompressible fluid of density rho flows through a horizontal pipe of radius r and then passes through a constriction of radius r over 2. If the fluid has pressure, PO and velocity VO before the constriction, the pressure in the constriction is, and we're going to apply Bernoulli's principle here, where P1 plus 1 half rho V1 squared plus rho GH equals P2 plus 1 half rho V2 squared plus rho GH, where H equals the height and it's zero since this is a hor this is horizontal. So since the surface area is what the incompressible fluid is constricted through, r divided by 2, that quantity squared equals r squared over 4. So rho v1 pi r squared equals rho v2 pi quantity r over 2 squared. So 4 v1 equals the v2. So p2 equals p1 plus 1 half rho v1 squared minus 1 half rho quantity 4 v1, that quantity 4 v1 squared. So P2 minus 1 half uh, rho V1 squared minus 16 over 2, do some algebra, uh, rho V1 squared equals P1 minus 15 over 2 rho V1 squared. And that is answer, oops, I'm sorry, answer A. 33. A thermodynamic system initially at absolute temperature T1 contains a mass M of water with specific heat capacity C. Heat is added until the temperature rises to T2. The change in entropy of the water is, here we're going to apply the second law of third thermodynamics where dS equals dQ over T, where the change in Q, the change in heat equals uh, the specific or equals the heat capacity times the mass times the change in temperature. So dQ equals uh, Cm, or again, C is the heat capacity, Cm dT. So C is specific heat capacity, and dS equals Cm dT over T. So the integral of that, integral of dS equals a change in S, if we're integrating from T equals T1 to T equals T2. So the integral of dS equals Cm times the integral of dT over T equals Cm ln T2 over T1. Now we have to know that definite integrals of 1 over x dx from x equals a to x equals b always equals ln b over a. So that leads us to answer e. Thirty-four. Heat Q is added to a monatomic ideal gas under conditions of constant volume resulting in a temperature change of delta T. How much heat will be required to produce the same temperature change if it is added under conditions of constant pressure? So the fundamental equation of thermodynamics du equals TDS minus PDV. So constant volume yields du1 equals TDS equals dq1 equals 1.5 R dt. So constant pressure yields du2 equals 1.5 R dt minus PDV. So from the ideal gas law, uh, with the number of moles n equals to 1, PV equals RT, so V equals RT over P. So we're going to do some algebra here. DU2 equals DQ2 minus PDV equals DQ2 minus RDT. So we're going to do some algebra down to the bottom uh, where we have, it's going to shake out. So I'll let you walk through the steps. Um, 
it's going to equal 5 thirds dq. Um, so please, please feel free to do the steps yourself, do the algebra yourself, make sure it works. Um, but our answer is 5 thirds dq, um, which is 5 thirds times the heat. Answer C. Number 35, a heat pump is to extract heat from an outdoor environment at 7 degrees Celsius and heat and heat the environment indoors to 27 degrees Celsius. For each 15,000 uh, joules of heat delivered indoors, the smallest amount of work that must be supplied to the heat pump is approximately, so here we're going to use the Carnot engine, uh, the efficiency of it equals 1 minus the temperature of the cold minus the temperature of the hot equals the work over the uh, heat of the hot. So from there we can arrive to work equals Q hot o times the quantity 1 minus uh, then again the quantity T cold divided by T hot. So we have to remember 0 degrees Celsius equals 273 degrees Kelvin. So from there we can plug in what the work would be is 15,000 joules times the quantity of 1 minus 280 Kelvin over 300 Kelvin and that equals 1,000 joules. That is answer B. 36. The capacitor in the circuit above is charged. If switch S is closed at time t equals 0, which of the following represents the magnetic energy U in the inductor as a function of time? Assume the capacitor and inductor are ideal. So the magnetic energy equals 1 half times Li squared, where L is the inductance, and it is a constant. So at time t equals 0, I equals 0. Um, this is from the right-hand rule, the current perpendicular to the magnetic field sine 0 equals 0. Therefore, the graph must start at 0, and it has to look like a sine wave squared. So it's going to all be above u equals 0. Um, so really, we could stop there and say that the answer is A, it must be a sine wave, it must start at 0. Therefore, answer A is our choice, number 36. Number 37, a pair of electric charges of equal magnitude Q and opposite sign are separated by a distance L as shown in the figure above. Which of the following gives the approximate magnitude and direction of the electric field set up by the two charges at point P on the y-axis, which is located a distance R much greater than L from the x-axis? So charge starts on positive charges and terminates on negative charges, so we must remember that. So the flow must be from positive Q to negative Q which is towards the left, um, which is the negative x direction in the diagram. So um, E equals 1 fourth pi uh, times epsilon over Q, the charge divided by R squared. So the magnitude of the electric field equals the negative change of phi divided by D. Um, so where the negative change in phi equals negative E times change in X equals negative E times L at the origin. So the magnitude of the electric field at P equals negative phi, uh, negative change in phi divided by R equals one quarter pi times epsilon uh, times Q L divided by R cubed. And so that is indeed answer E. And again, from the beginning, we could rule out everything that's not in the negative x direction. Um, so we were choosing between C and E, and it took a lot of work to get to E from C. Number 38. Consider two very long straight insulated wires oriented at right angles. The wires carry currents of equal magnitude I in the direction shown in the figure above. What is the net magnetic field at point P? So ma the magnetic field equals B equals magnetic constant times I divided by 2 pi R equals magnetic constant I divided by 2 pi times the area in, um, in this problem. So in, instead of using uh, R, we're using A. Um, a, is a, a. A, as you can see in the problem, is A is simply the length, length, length. So 
use the right hand rule again the magnetic field is in the positive z and minus z direction um, from these from these two currents so equal currents and distances so the net must be zero um, so that's the answer e 39. A beam of muons travels through the laboratory with a speed V equals 4 fifths C. The lifetime of a muon in its rest frame is tau equals 2.2 times 10 to negative 6 seconds. The mean distance traveled by the muons in the laboratory frame is, uh, here we're going to use the time dilation formula. So uh, TO equals T times divided by the quantity 1 minus V squared over C squared, that quantity square root. So um, plug in our four fifths, which is 0.8, and we get 1.67 T equals TO. So the distance equals V times TO, and um, T naught, rather. Um, so D equals, now plug everything in, D equals 0.8 times C, which is 3.8 times centimeters per second, so it's the speed of light, times 2.2 times 10 to the minus six seconds, uh, times 1.67, which is coming from our time dilation, and that equals 8.8 .8 times 10 squared meter. Uh, that quantity is 10 squared meters, and so that equals 880 meters. That is answer C. Number 40, a particle of mass m decays from rest into two particles. One particle has mass m, the, the other particle is massless. The momentum of the massless particle is... So the particle decays from rest, so the initial momentum is zero. So E1 squared equals P2 squared, C squared plus M squared, capital M squared, C to the fourth equals capital M squared, C to the fourth. So E2, the massless particle, equals PC. Uh, and that, that comes from, if you do e, e squared equals P squared, C squared, take the square root of both sides, E equals PC. So from energy conservation, E1 equals E2 plus C3, and from the conservation of momentum, P2 equals minus P3, so P2 squared equals P3 squared. So E1 equals MC squared equals P squared C plus um, P3 C squared plus M squared C the fourth, that quantity square root. Uh, again, we're going to set C equal to 1. We're going to do some algebra take it down, take it down, take it down, and so finally we're going to get after some algebraic steps capital M squared minus M squared divided by 2 times capital M equals P. And so remembering that we set C equal to 1, that is answer B.